Hi friends, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to go through the basics of Amazon Route 53 and set up some DNS records to route traffic to various places. Route 53, of course, is Amazon's managed DNS service. It lets you register domain names and set up DNS records to route traffic to another domain name, to an IP address, or even to an AWS resource. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to set up is the ability to handle a scenario like this, where a user navigates to mysubdomain.amberaws.com. Now, obviously, we need the actual IP address where that web page lives, and that's where Route 53 comes in. We'll set up Route 53 to say, oh, that's actually located at IP address 12.34.56.78. We'll use a real IP address when we get to the demo, and then the browser can say, oh, okay, EC2 instance at 12345678. I want the index.html page that you're hosting, and then the instance can return that and it'll load in the browser. So let's go set that up. If you're new to Route 53 and you wanted to purchase your own domain name, you can come to the landing page here and say, get started, and then just walk through a wizard right here to register a domain. I won't go all the way through this, but if you wanted to get something like, nobody in the world has this domain.com, let's see if that's available. And it is for $12 a year, you could buy that. You can also transfer a domain from another registrar if you have one, but basically just walk through this wizard. It'll have you fill in your contact information and then it'll just show up on your regular AWS bill. I've already got a domain name myself. So let me just back up here. And if you come into the dashboard, you'll see that I have one hosted zone. A hosted zone is something that you get automatically when you register a domain. And you'll notice this one is a public zone. And for a public zone, this is where you set up your records to handle traffic from the internet, which is what we're working on right now. There's also a private hosted zone, which is used to hold records that route things within a VPC, a virtual private cloud. More in this video if you're interested. But for now, we're going to focus on the public zone. Let me click into amberaws.com. That's my domain name. There are a couple of records here, but what we want to do is create a new record. So over here, create record. And the first one we're going to handle is mysubdomain.amberaws.com. And then over here, you'll see the record type. There's actually lots of different DNS record types. We're not going to go through all of those here in this video, but let me just show you a couple that we're going to be working with. First, we have an A record, and this is used to point a name, a host name, to a specific IP address. And this is only IPv4. If you're working with IPv6, the record is AAAA, four A's. But for IPv4, something like aws.amazon.com, we can point that to a specific IP address like you see here. Then we have a C name record, and this points a host name to another name or to another A record. So something like amzn.websvcs.mywebsite.com, that could go to aws.amazon.com. And note that this one only works on non-root domains, so abc.example.com instead of just example.com. And then finally, we have the alias record. This is specific to AWS, and it actually works in conjunction with some of the other record types, like the A record or the C name. We'll see that in just a minute. But you would use this to point your host name to an AWS resource, maybe to a load balancer that you have, or a static website that you have set up in S3, or what have you. These are free, which is nice, and they work on root and non-root domains. So you could point app.mywebsite.com to an S3 bucket where you're hosting a static website, and that would also work on the root, just mywebsite.com, going to that same bucket or to a CloudFront distribution or lots of different places you can send it. But this is AWS specific, and this is how you route to AWS resources. Okay, back to the demo. For what we're doing, we're gonna use the A record we want to route to a specific IP address. And I actually have an EC2 instance up and running here. My web server, this is just a Linux machine with a simple web page on it. You'll see that we have a public IPv4 address. And if I just copy that and open it in a new tab, you'll see my hello world message. So obviously we can get there by typing in the IP, but we want somebody to be able to get here by going to mysubdomain.amberaws.com. So back to Route 53. We're saying when somebody types this in, we want to route that traffic to the IPv4 address, and this is the value of that address. I'm just going to paste that in here. TTL, or time to live, this is basically how long we're going to cache 
this query. So if we were to try to hit the same subdomain address again in the next 300 seconds, the resulting IP would be cached, so we don't have to go look it up. I'm actually gonna set this to 30 seconds, but that's what that does. Routing policy will go with simple, and then we'll create the record. It does take a little bit of time for changes to propagate, but it's actually pretty quick, and you can always check the status here. So view status for Route 53, you'll see status is pending. So if we were to try to hit that subdomain right now, there's a chance that it wouldn't work, but we just got into an in-sync status. So let me just open up a new tab. And if we type in mysubdomain.amberaws.com, it should work. This should take us to that Hello World page on that EC2 instance. And voila, there we go. Pretty easy, huh? So that's using an A record to direct traffic to an IP address. Let's check out how this works with an AWS resource using the alias down here. And just to call out, alias is not a separate record type, but again, you're using it in conjunction with something like the ones above. And we're actually gonna use this with an A record to point to an Elastic Beanstalk environment that I have set up. Let me just show you that quickly. So I created just a simple Elastic Beanstalk application here. This is the URL for it. So if I open that up in a new tab, there's the page for my basic Node.js application. And we wanna be able to point to this using an alias. So coming back to Route 53, let me come into amberaws.com. You'll see the record that we created there before for the subdomain. This time, let's not use the subdomain. Let's have this work from the root. In other words, awsamber.com. And we want this to go to Elastic Beanstalk. Here again, we're gonna use the A record. And then the alias is just a toggle right here. So we'll say, yes, we wanna use an alias to route traffic to an AWS resource. And you'll see all the different choices that you have here. It could be an API gateway API, it might be CloudFront, maybe a network load balancer, a website that you're hosting in S3, lots of different places this can go. We're gonna use the Elastic Beanstalk environment. The region where this is located is in US West 2 in Oregon for me, and then this next text box here, this will query for any Elastic Beanstalk environments that you have in that region. So you shouldn't have to type in things manually. It should find them here in this dropdown. So we'll select that, leave everything else the same, and create records. Once again, let's go view the status up here to see how things are going. Currently pending. We'll give it a few more seconds. And then once this is done, we should be able to go to amberaws.com and see that Elastic Beanstalk app. I'll do a refresh and everything's working. So let's come up to a new tab, amberaws.com. And there's my node application. So just as we got to by going to the full endpoint here, now we're getting that from just going to our domain name. So that's it, folks. There's obviously a lot more you can do with Route 53, but hopefully that gives you a sense for what it's capable of and the basics of how to work with it. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button so it can spread to more people. And also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.